What is going on everybody, Julia here, and today we are going to continue the introduction to HTML video series. In the first lesson we learned about the HTML document structure, today the subject is going to be the head element and its metadata. Now without any further ado, let's jump right into it. As I said in the previous lesson, the head element is a container for everything you want to include on the HTML page that is in the content you will show to viewers. This can include things such as keywords, a page description, character set declarations, CSS, and much more. But what is metadata? Well, in simple terms, metadata is just data that describes data. In this particular situation, it's data that describes the HTML document. Now let's take a look at the most common forms of metadata. You'll learn about what they are and what they do. The first form of metadata that you are going to include to the page will handle character encoding. To add metadata, HTML uses the meta element in conjunction with attributes. To specify the character encoding, we will use the meta element and then we will add the car set attribute and set it to UTF-8. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Again, the meta element, and then we use the car set attribute here, or char, however you pronounce it. And then for the value, we use UTF-8, like so. As previously said, this element specifies the document character encoding. UTF-8 is a universal character set that includes pretty much any character from any human language. This means that your web page will be able to handle displaying any language that you provide. It's therefore a good practice to use this on pretty much every page that you create. Next, we are going to take a look at how we can add metadata about the page's author as well as a page description. This type of metadata can be very beneficial when you use it alongside the title element uh, when it comes to optimizing your site for search engines. So once again, we are going to use the meta element, except that this time we are going to use the name attribute. We are going to set it to author and then we are going to use the content attribute, and then we are going to set this to whatever the name is of the page creator. So for this example, I'll just use my name. Specifying an author is beneficial in many ways. It is useful to be able to understand who wrote the page and in case that you have any questions and you want to contact them. So next, in order to set a page description, the concept is still the same thing. We will use the meta element. We will use the name attribute and what we want to set this to is going to be description. Then for the content, this is going to be the description itself. So I'll just use, this will be my page description like so. And for this example, I want to show you guys how this actually looks when it comes to search engines. So let me just pull up Google Chrome here and let me just adjust it and let's look for example something like Microsoft. So here you can see that we have the title of the page and then we have the description itself. Uh, but yeah that's pretty much a brief demo of how the well not necessarily the title but the description works. Another piece of metadata that we can add to the head element is going to be the viewport meta tag. And this is specifically helpful for responsive web design. Let me actually type this over to make it a little bit more readable. So to utilize the viewport meta tag, it's going to be the same deal. We are going to use the meta element. And then for the name here, we are going to set it to viewport. Then we are going to set the content to the following, which is going to be with then equal to device dash with. And I'll explain what this means in a little bit. So then we have a comma here and then we set it to or continue as to say to initial scale will equal to 1.0. 
So here for the content, as I said, we have width equal to device width. This part sets the width of the page to follow the screen width of the device that you're currently on. So obviously this will be different depending on the device that you're viewing the page on. Then the initial scale part is going to define the initial zoom level when the page is first loaded. So let me just drop some content here inside of the body so that I can show you how this actually works. So I'm going to have an image and then here I'm going to actually source an image from the Onsplash API. So I'll just paste in the link. And then I'm going to have a P tag, which is for paragraph. We're going to learn uh, more in depth about all this later, but for now it doesn't really matter. And then I'm just generating some dummy text right here. So what I'm going to do now is open up this in the browser. Again, let me just open up um, the browser and bring it down here. And what I'm going to do now is show you guys how this looks on the emulator here for the iPhone 12 Pro. So notice how it looks great. It just adjusts automatically. So this is the normal view. But notice what happens if I go back to BS Code and I comment this out. So going back to the demo. Now, obviously, we get a random image every time, so it's not going to be the same. But what and it's actually taking quite a bit of time now. And um, now notice that it looks how it did before. But if we go to the responsive view now, notice how it's just rendering the same view that we had here for the larger screens. So this is how the meta tag for the viewport is very useful. So again, going back, now you can see that it's rendered uh, much nicely. So once more, actually, I'm going to keep it open because I'm going to show you guys something else shortly. Uh, but going back to BS Code, uh, we can actually get rid of this just so that it's not so cluttered. Uh, but again, to reiterate what just happened, after we opened the browser, we can now see that the content of the page was normal for the device that we're on. Obviously, we're on a computer, but uh, the moment we went in a mobile device, the content kind of broke. Well, not necessarily broke, but it just showed exactly how it did on the larger screens. And with the meta tag, it actually adjusted and zoomed it in so that it looked much nicely. Um, but moving on, uh, the next piece of metadata that we can place within the head element is the title element itself, which is something that we actually showcased in the last lesson. So here we have the title element and this is Julio's um, web page or website, whatever you want to, you know, whatever it's relevant. So again, if we go back to the document, we can now see the title here on the tab. So let me just minimize that once more. And again, as I said in the previous lesson, this sets the title of the page which is the title that is going to appear on the tab when the page is loaded in. And another piece that I want to showcase is going to show up here next to the title as well, where this uh, world globe is, and that's going to be the fave icon. So to add in a fave icon, what we can do is use the link element like so. So by default here, I'm using Emmet when I hit tab. It just automatically just gives me um, something like this. Uh, but this is basically going to be the relationship between the file that you're linking to. Obviously, we're not linking a style sheet, although we will later. For now, what we want to do is link an icon. So the rel, again, relationship uh, is going to be icon. So the href here is basically going to be the attribute that defines a link to a resource as a reference URL. So basically, this is going to be the location of where the resource lives. Since I have an image here, which is my logo, 
in my main uh, directory. I don't really have to go into folders or things of that nature. So I can just straight up do this and link it directly like so. And another thing that we can do is add a type. So here we have the type and the type attribute is just going to, as said, the name is going to suggest is going to be the type of content that you are including. Uh, we are including a image X hyphen icon like so. So now if we go back to the browser, we should be able to see this logo next to the title. And there we have it. Let me actually just bring it out to the middle here. And this is what a fave icon is. You've actually seen it multiple times. So here, if I just go to Google, here we see the Google uh, fave icon. So that's exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Another thing uh, is actually what, what we uh, showcased before when I hit the tab and Emmett actually auto completed it. So here we have the link and then the rel is going to be set to style sheet because now we are going to be linking to an external style sheet that actually doesn't exist yet. So let's go ahead and create it here within this metadata folder. So here, let's just say style.css, like so. There's nothing there, obviously. And then to link to it, again, you just have to specify the location of where this file lives. Again, it's inside of my main directory, so I can just simply do dot slash style.css, like so. And obviously nothing is going to happen here within the browser. However, if I go back here, what we can do is say something like, let's select the body and let's go ahead and change the background color to black, like so. So now if we go back, notice how the background color changes and that's how you know that you linked your file correctly. So if I comment this out here, we now get the default white background. You can also use the style element inside of the head here to basically do the same thing. And we set the background color to black and it's going to work just the same way like so. However, this isn't really a good practice to have all your styles here. You can do it and get away with it if you just have maybe like a few, but that's about it. Uh, if you want to keep your file neat and organized, it's better if you just have an external file for it. What we can do now is go ahead and link to a script. So here we can use the source attribute, which in a way is similar to the href. But what we're going to do here is just link to a script like so dot js which we haven't created and then we can just use the defer attribute here and if we hover over it the nice thing about vs code is that it's um what do you call it it's integrated with a lot of the mdm resources so it's going to also give you a description here of what it is and as the name says it's just a boolean attribute that is said to indicate to a browser that the script is meant to be executed after the document has been parsed but before the DOM content is loaded. So if we go ahead and create another file here inside of this metadata folder, call it script.js, and we can do something like, actually, let me just do an alert. It's gonna be a lot easier. And we can say something like this works. So, if we go back to the browser and well, it's actually reloaded automatically to, uh, thanks to autosave, you can now say, see that it says it works. And um, yeah, this is pretty much all there is to the head element and metadata. Obviously, there's a lot more that you can include uh, within your page, but that's going to depend on what your needs are. Um, that's going to be the end for this video. If you find this content useful, be sure to subscribe, like the video, leave a comment if you have any questions. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next lesson.